Welcome back. So, the idea behind this video is to determine the order of reaction for a couple of reactants, or more formally stated, the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of reactants. Let's see, I'm going get to get a pen, get something to write with, and the symbol brackets. Ooh, are used to indicate concentration so that would be read the concentration of A so we're going I'll, this this is uh, used a lot in determining order of reaction and rate law and all that stuff and it's uh, will resurface again when we get into solutions and and then after that so uh, in this chart right here, the symbology that would say the initial concentration of nitrogen dioxide, and that would be the initial concentration of ozone. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and determine the order of reaction with respect to nitrogen, actually the concentration of nitrogen dioxide and the concentration of ozone and what that means is what the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of either of those reactants or any concentration of any reactant in any system essentially is how much does the concentration of one of these substances impact the rate of reaction and uh, there are a variety of types. They're called first order, second order, third order, fourth order, etc. And a first, when if it's a oh, there is even zeroth order. I spaced zero. Uh, and, and as an example of what that means, if uh, in the table here there was an example like in this one of nitrogen dioxide. The concentration of the nitrogen dioxide changed from experiment one to experiment two. And if you went over here and the rate did not change, then the concentration of that particular reactant would have zero impact on the rate. And so it would be zeroth order with respect to that reactant. And uh, if the, and, and the others, uh, I will pick up at least one of them. I can see it right here. So we'll we'll proceed. So one of the basic ideas uh, behind this process is very similar to what you learned in biology in that uh, if you're doing an experiment and you have more than one variable, you have to keep all the other variables constant while evaluating one variable of interest. Uh, for example, if you're going to study the effect of water and nutrient and the amount of sunlight on plant growth if you vary all three of those at the same time and then grow, go to and try and draw conclusions about what impact any of those have on the growth of the plant it's virtually impossible to do because you don't have uh, any f way to determine which one affected the growth by how much so the idea is to, to hold uh, the amount of water and the amount of sunlight constant and to vary the amount of nutrient and then val uh, evaluate the amount of nutrient. This is exactly the same in this context of determining uh, how much each of these reactants impact the rate. Uh, so for example, right there, uh, what that says in, re in experiments one and two, the initial concentration of ozone was a constant. So if we look at experiments one and two, and with the fact that the initial concentration of the nitrogen dioxide changed, the ozone was a constant, and the rate changed, we can figure out how much the, the change in the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide had on the rate of the reaction. And, and it's a reasonably straightforward kind of a ratio thing. So what one does is looks at this concentration and this concentration. And you can see that 
experiment two, the concentration was twice as large as experiment three. So this is 2x. Between experiment one and two, uh, the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide was two times as great. And if you look at the rate, the rate of experiment two was also twice as big as experiment one really close to it, close enough for experimental error. So if in this case the rate or the concentration of nitrogen dioxide doubled, the ozone remained the same, and the rate of the reaction doubled, then what one would say is that um, the order of the reaction with respect to the constant to the concentration of nitrogen dioxide is first order uh, because there there was a one to one first one to one relationship between the change in the concentration and the change in the rate okay there we go let's swap and see if we can figure out uh, the order of reaction with respect to ozone. So now in this case, uh, if we're going to figure out how much impact the ozone or the concentration of the ozone has on the rate of reaction, we have to have the concentration of the nitro nitrogen dioxide be a constant. And luckily enough, here in experiment two and three, the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide did not change but the concentration of the ozone did and between the difference between experiment two and three or the is well the difference isn't a very good word because that means subtract um, but the the factor that's the better word because it's a multiply deal you multiply this concentration by two you get that one just like this one so the the concentration of the ozone increased by a factor of two and right there the rate of reaction also increased by a factor of two and the concentration oh I'm gonna give that an NC no change I'm gonna give that one an NC in the first one we did as well for no change so uh, again the concentration of the ozone doubled the rate doubled, so the order of reaction with respect to ozone is also first order. Oops. Wrong color. Hey. The order of reaction with respect to the concentration of ozone is first order. I just found this data on the internet and plopped it in here. It would have been nice if there would have been something other than first orders, um, but it didn't work out that way. So what I would say is, that there we go, we're done. That's all there is to it. Um, if, for example, the rate in terms of other orders, the rate changes. And it doesn't really matter how much it changes. It can go up by a factor of two. It can go up by a factor of three. It can go by a, by a factor of four. The, the rate, shoot, I don't want the rate. I want the concentration. If the concentration of any reactant, so we'll call it A, if it changes and it increases uh, by a factor of two or three or four or is cut in half by a factor of or changes by a factor of one half or one fourth or one sixteenth or whatever if the concentration changes but the rate does not then uh, with respect to the concentration of reactant A that would be zeroth order Zeroth. That sounds kind of cool. Let me see here. If 
uh, the concentration of reactant, any old reactant, it doesn't matter, so we'll call it A again. If it uh, doubles and the rate doubles, then it is said that uh, the order of reaction with respect to reactant A is first order. That would also work if the concentration of reactant A tripled and the rate tripled, it would still be first order. If the concentration of reactant A quadrupled and the rate quadrupled, it would be first order. And let's see if we had uh, the concentration of reactant A. Oh, Lord. <laughs> nice bracket. Pace. Uh, doubled and the rate subsequently quadrupled I have no idea how to spell quadrupled I hope that's close then the it is said that the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of A is second order uh, if the concentration of reactant A tripled, then the rate would have to go up by a factor of 9. If the concentration of reactant A went up by a factor of 4, the rate of the reaction would have to go up by a factor of 16 to be second order, and so on. And there you go, determining the order of a reaction with respect to any the concentration of any given reactant is as we just described but for heaven's sakes when you do this uh, if you are finding the order of reactant with respect to one of the reactants the other reactants concentration must be a constant or you will learn nothing and so then you just evaluate the data when one is a constant and the other one changes then you find out how much there is a change in the concentration and compare that to the change in the rate and then draw the conclusions based on this little deal right here and there you go take care then bye bye now